everyone. We are making a joyful noise unto the Lord this morning. Welcome everyone. It's great to have you all today on this beautiful morning to come before the Lord here at Old St. Andrews. And uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, welcome to our guests today, especially. And uh, our worship begins with this beautiful intro uh, on Nada Lux. And, um, and thank you, David, for what uh, he just mentioned to me, the, the final uh, line, the final stanza. Uh, Grant us to live as members here of thy most sacred body of us. We are so blessed uh, as a church family here in this place. Amen? Amen. And uh, as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, let's be really mindful of that uh, during this beautiful intro. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Amen. Not a famine of bread, 
nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord.
Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager. And charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do. So when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill, and write down 80. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of the world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for themselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they will receive you into eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also, also faithful in very much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in very much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in what in that which is another's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Luke 
a reversal. It's called the great reversal. Reversals of status uh, when Jesus and the kingdom of God appear. For example, the proud are scattered. The powerful are brought down. The lowly are lifted up. The hungry are filled. The rich are sent away empty. Now the topic of the sermon is, why does the employer commend the dishonest manager for being shrewd? That is, for responding shrewdly to a difficult circumstance in which he's been dishonest. This is a troubling parable throughout the centuries of trying to interpret what it means and what Jesus meant. After all, listen to this. The, com uh, the master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. So here we have a dishonest manager being commended. And then Jesus says, the sons of this world, non-Christians, worldly Christians, are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. So he's saying that worldly people are more shrewd than dealing with, uh, than Christians know how to deal with their lives. And I tell you, make, and Jesus said, and I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. Now I hope I can offer some insight into the interpretation of this parable and that you might be able to take something home with you. If you don't take something home with you, know this is an awful parable. <laughs> I don't know why Jesus spoke it. I'm still not sure what it means. Not only did I write the sermon, but when I presented it to the staff meeting, you know, staff meetings, whoever is preaching will present their sermon. I presented the sermon that I worked on hard on, and at the end of presenting it, I said, you know, I don't know what this is saying to you. <laughs> I rewrote the entire sermon. So I really ought to skip my next scheduled homily. <laughs> Make friends with unrighteous wealth so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings? That's your homework, to find out what that means. <laughs> All right, topic of the sermon. Why does the employer commend the dishonest manager? And why are the sons of this world more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light? First of all, let's look at the word shrewd. In Greek, uh, phronomos, and it can be translated also as wise or prudent. So, you know, shrewd to me sounds a little one-handed, but uh, how about wise or prudent? The dishonest manager is wise. That's a little bit. Still not there. And Jesus, of course, is calling his followers the sons of light. <laughs> as he does in John 12, 36. Jesus said, while you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. Jesus' disciples could learn something about acting shrewdly or wisely from the sons of the world. So that's lesson number one. We can learn something from this parable. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to share some possibilities. First, it has to do with making friendships, right? By uh, the 
employer's commendation of the dishonored truth manager has to do with making friendships for themselves by means of dishonest wealth so that those new friends would receive them into eternal dwellings. Now the disciples are not to use dishonest wealth to exploit others as the rich do. Rather, the disciples are to use wealth to make friends for themselves. Friendships based on a reciprocal relationship. Friendships in a new kind of reciprocity uh, that I think is very well illustrated by the Philippines. In the Philippines, a particular relationship occurs uh, regarding one's indebtedness, and Filipinos are very aware of indebtedness. And in Filipino psychology, there's a concept called eutonalab. Eutonalab literally translated means inner debt or a debt of inner gratitude. This debt of inner gratitude occurs when a person becomes the beneficiary of significant assistance given by another. Okay, let's say you owe a lot, large amount of money on your home mortgage. You've lost your income. You are desperate. A friend comes along and pays your whole mortgage off for you. Well, how's that going to make you feel toward your friend? It's going to give you a sense of inner debt and gratitude. You do anything for your friend. Whatever thing, whatever time, whatever situation, it's like you're totally in your debt. Do you know I've been at this church for nine years, and it's out of my entire ministry, it is the top of being fruitful as far as my own self-evaluation. And I owe that to Father Marshall for bringing me on. And I have that kind of inner debt and inner gratitude toward him that whatever he would ask me to do, I would do it. It's, a, it's owing something to someone inside so that you are at their command. So the manager calculates this and he knows this. So the manager gets all these people who have these financial debts, he reduces all of them. He knows that these people will have this inner gratitude toward him so that when this manager's fired because he has been dishonest, these people who have this inner gratitude toward him will hire him to another job. That's pretty shrewd. That's pretty calculating. And a better word would be wise or prudent. A third lesson of the employee's commendation of his dishonest, shrewd manager is related to Jesus' words that one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. How we deal with dishonest wealth and what belongs to another says a lot about how we deal with true riches, how we use the resources at our disposal in this life matters, even though our true riches can only be found in heavenly places, as Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Finally, a fourth lesson, a, or an interpretation, a take, take away from this parable uh, of why the dishonest shrewd manager is commended focuses on the last verse where Jesus said, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. 
you cannot serve God and wealth. And this reinforces the central theme in Luke because our first and great commitment should be to Jesus and to nothing else, including economic security. As Jesus said, so therefore, if any one of you does not renounce all that he has, cannot be my disciple. Let me conclude. Why does the employer command the dishonest manager for being shrewd? He is not being commended because he's dishonest. He's being commended because he's prudent. He's wise. He's shrewd. And Jesus is saying, you can learn from this. The sons of the world are pretty good at doing these types of things. You know, I'm watching up. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but in our church we have several members along with me who are, uh, we are called the Holy Watchers. We watch TV shows and share good ones with others. I don't know if even the rector knows that. <laughs> but I'm watching uh, Suits, S-U-I-T-S, about lawyers. <laughs> Have y'all ever watched that? I mean, uh, and I asked one of our lawyers that's handling our uh, legal situation, did he watch it? He said, yes, he had. And I said, well, what do you think of it? He said, well, it's got some truth in it. So I can tell you, lawyers are pretty shrewd. <laughs> Watch suits. You'll see. So Jesus is saying, hey, there's a lot of shrewdness, a lot of prudence and wisdom going on out there in the world. Sons of light, emulate that. And this manager, rather than being transformed in a bad situation, he, uh, he, he makes it so it comes out to be a good situation for him himself. Reducing other people's debts, thereby creating a new safe set of relationships where there is utanabal law of debt of inner gratitude. Perhaps the one sentence that is the best commentary on this parable is given by Jesus in Matthew 10, who says, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Amen. Amen.
praying for the church and the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, for Chip Edgar, our Bishop, for Bill Skilton, our Bishop in Residence, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our Rector, Father Marshall, our Assistant to the Rector, Father Joe, and Father David, our Deacon Emeritus, Lee Hershon, and our church staff. We also pray for St. Andrew's Mission and their Vicar, Father Jimmy Galan. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, in particular, Father Zach Nash, chaplain at Joint Base Charleston, All Saints Church in Florence, and their rector, Father Jason Hamshaw, Chelsea, and their family, San Jose Church in the Dominican Republic, their rector, Father Sandino Sanchez, and their bishop, Moises Casada, and for Father Rob Sturdy, Anglican chaplain at the Citadel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President, Joe Biden, our Governor, Henry McMaster, and our Mayor, John Tecklenburg, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity, particularly those on our parish prayer list, and for those we name at this time. Julia Adams, Bob Jeffries, David Ecker, Nan Chris, are there others? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, especially Ruth Settles, George Ellis, in thanksgiving let us pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. as they deliberate this final petition filed against us, give unto them the spirit of wisdom and understanding that they may provide finality to these lawsuits and enable us to continue our mission and ministry here. Guide and direct us as to how best to serve and support Camp St. Christopher, Holy Trinity, Good Shepherd, and all the parishes, Lord, who have been displaced. Grant to all of us in our diocese your peace, which truly passes understanding, and the reassurance that you are a just God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these and all our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the word of God to all who truly turn to him, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, or for, for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. First, before we break the bread and share the cup of uh, people gathered this morning, it's beautiful. <coughs> Let us take time and greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Church. Um, 
before our offertory sentence, before the offering, um, I'd like at this time to ask the new officers to come forward uh, for our church women's board. Um, as they take office, uh, we'd like to pray for them. Uh, so, Cindy, if you and your officers would come forward at this time, uh, that we might install you through prayer, uh, the new officers of the Old St. Andrews Church Women's Board.
power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. Spirit, 
to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. And this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Now in the words our Lord taught us, we are bold to sing.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you.